My friends, what is going on? Wanted to jump in here and make another technical update as far as what I'm seeing on the meme stocks. Before we get started with the video, you guys know the deal. Please like and subscribe. Uh, tell your buddies about it if, if they're in meme stocks. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Colin underscore Gladman. Obviously, when things get crazy, uh, that's going to be the fastest way that I can update anybody and everybody if I see something change. Um, also, before we get started with the video, I want to be as clear as I can that I do not care what you do with this video, with this information, or your position. I don't care if you buy shares. I don't care if you sell shares. I don't care if you sell puts or calls. I don't care if you buy puts or calls. I do not care. What these videos are about is to provide both bullish and bearish cases so that way you can make the best decision for yourself, your family, and your portfolio because at the end of the day, that's all that matters right? Who cares what anybody says on Twitter or the internet or on CNBC? At the end of the day, the decisions that you make for yourself, your family, and your portfolio, those are between, well, well you and the people who matter most, all right? So real quick, on the macro, I'm going to start with the macro on both of these. So that way, my, my cases, if you will, for, for why both uh, setups look good on the macro and, and where some future price targets could go. Now, I want to keep in mind here, or let me, I want you to keep in mind. <laughs> I already know this, obviously, but I want you to keep in mind that I'm going to start with monthly charts on both of these stocks. So when we're talking monthly charts, right, we're, we're talking time here, okay? But without a doubt, and what I always teach with my Discord is when you're when in doubt zooming out, Look at those charts just like you would any other zoomed in five minute or 15 minute chart. So if I was looking at GameStop's chart and I was looking at this like a 15 minute setup, well, I would say, okay, you clearly obviously had a lot of resistance in this 10 area. You had a strong volume breakthrough. You had a long corrective period. And now you're starting to catch another high volume breakout. This is really good for long term upside. The way you would look at these type of price targets is the same way I would do it if it was a 15 minute chart. So I would take my Fib extension tool, I would start at the bottom, I would go to the top, and I would go to my low before we started catching the breakout. Typically, this type of move eventually will touch a one extension. Now that's, our, that's all the way up here towards like 1800 a share. Now. We're talking GameStop, right? So you got to ask yourself, is that really a possibility with how many times, you know, all these stocks get halted? I mean, I don't even know how many halts that we've had here in the past few days, but it's, it's I mean, it's got to be coming close to 100 at this point in time. I, th I think I saw it was 50 between the two uh, just the other day. So the reality is, is that's the way I would view price targets. Now, that could take some time. The reality is, is from the low back over here on GameStop, even just to the high with the sneeze, squeeze, however you want to look at it, that was still almost a year, right? So even if this bottom right here, you know, we're, we're looking at an entire year before potentially you'd be looking at those type of price targets. And then once again, you got to ask yourself, you know, is is everybody going to be caught, you know, so far off sides right here? And, you know, this is where some people will say, oh, shorts never covered, bro. And that's cool. You're welcome to your theory. Um, I just, I'm looking at the technicals here. So when looking at the technicals here, I think that's a very reasonable price target if you get a similar move. And then you got to ask yourself, are we going to get a similar move? I mean, even the 0.5, you know, getting up here towards all-time highs, again, around 130, that doesn't seem unreasonable in any way, shape, or form looking at this chart okay so that's the way i personally would be approaching this now if this move starts to fade uh you know something happened you know it turns out that roaring kitty's account really was you know hacked uh which by the way People have been talking about how like, oh, we don't we don't need Andrew Tate or we don't need Dave Portnoy. Oh, we have we've been here from the beginning. Uh, uh, uh. Like, who cares, man? Like, who cares? <laughs> the more people, the better. The more attention, the better. The more FOMO, the better. So if, you know, something happens, Keith Gill actually comes out and, you know, shows that like, hey, guys, this really is me. I've just I've had a lot of time on my hands, been making a lot of videos or he shows a position in GameStop or anything like that, then just this thing's going to go, all right? 
So, like I said, you, you manage your shares or positions or whatever, however you want to. If this move starts to fade, so let's get in here on, a, well, actually, I want to go to a weekly basis here. So, what we really want to see is this long period of consolidation. Once again, now we're on a weekly chart, so this is still a long period of time. This long period of consolidation, just it just has to hold as support. So this kind of 25 to about 28 ballpark area, this really needs to hold. We really don't want, you know, just kind of some ugly faded, you know, shooting star look here on the weekly. Um, let's see here. Do we ever even get anything like that? Yeah, there were some ugly weekly candles back, back in here, you know, as this move was starting to build up. So, guys, the reality is, is there's going to be pullbacks. Um, and, you know, market makers, they're going to entice you to buy into those weekly contracts, things of that nature. Um, so just, like I said, be smart. Um, once again, like I always tell my Discord, I'm totally fine with you taking gambling and risky positions so long as you're responsible about it. There is nothing wrong with going to the casino, having yourself a great time, and, and enjoying yourself in life. If you go to the casino with your mortgage payment, then you deserve to be homeless, right? So it's all about the mindset of it. So anyway, what I really want to see here is I really want to see, worst case scenario, that area hold. But it's going to be much better, and I actually really like this daily candle here, um, kind of as the 921 EMAs are catching to it. So we, we had the harsh sell-off, but for the most part, it recovered into end of the day, which I like that. Kind of took care of this gap and imbalance that was going on in here. Now, when looking at these moves, if we're going to get you know some pretty strong impulsive moves out of here, that first retrace is typically the ugliest one. So AMC already had it, which I'll, I'll get into that, but GameStop really hasn't had it yet, right? So, but you could also argue that AMC got the deeper retrace because um, of the share offering that they did, right? Which, you know, Adam Aaron, he's, he's never seen, you know, a pump in AMC that he hasn't wanted to do a share offering on, right? So uh, basically came down here, touched the 382, now you're starting to push off of that. If this is the bottom, if we start to pump from here, then I would be potentially looking at a target of about 200, okay? I don't think there's any question that's a, that's a very serious possibility on GameStop, assuming this is our bottom. If it starts to get a little ugly and we start to get a stronger pullback. Let's say we get that 618 pullback. Um, so a quick little lesson for everybody here. When it comes to using your Fibonacci, there's what's called premium zones and there's what's called discount zones. Big money likes to get a discount, right? Because they're big money. So anything that is going to be between the top all the way down to the 0.5, this is going to be your premium zone. So just understand if you buy anything in here, you are paying a premium for it. Once you start getting below the 0.5, now you're in the discount zone. This is where big boys like to load up. It doesn't mean it's coming back here, but you will start to get a lot more interest, right? Once that dip starts getting into the premium zone. So, that 618 retracement is pretty much a perfect gap fill. So if that happens, it's not the end of the world. And it's kind of like, if you will, pulling the bow and arrow back a little bit further. If that happens, you start to get that sell off, you start to get the shake out, you start to get everybody just, that's what the market wants, right? It, it wants all these people depressed again. And this is where I'll get somebody, I can't be depressed. I've been in this thing for three and a half years. I'm numb to everything. And that's cool. So if we do get that 618 retrace or gap fill, then you'd be looking at potentially a target of, you know, as high as like 118, but potentially if this is a, so if this is a move one, and then you get that move two that's the pullback, move three is your big long extended one. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> that's where you go to like the 1.618 and that's 377. So if people start getting, you know, shaken out, 
right? And go, oh, the buzz is fade, it's over, bag, new bag holders, yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden, Roaring Kitty actually like post a position or anything like that, then boom, this thing can, can really go, okay? Uh, if you start to lose that 24 to the 27 level that I talked about, then that that's definitely bearish just because this was such a long period of, excuse me, this was such a long period of resistance, you certainly want to see it act as support, which you've already seen that happen one time, right? So there's lots of reasons to think that, that this isn't going to get the pullback that, that, that most might want to see. Like I said, that 0.5 is literally sitting right in the middle of that zone that I've, I've drawn out right around 25 bucks. So that is definitely key if it starts to pull back. Yeah, I mean, I, so even on a shorter term time frame, I mean, you started to get the, the breakout, but this is right where one of the halts happened. So it looks like it's down a little bit in after hours right now. So I don't love this look right here. Eh, I don't know that I love the look of that pendant right there either. But certainly you've got a trend line that's going, right? So even if even if you come down here and then bounce, which I'm about to make a case for AMC to, to look like that. So th that's overall what you would want to see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that look. I mean, it, it's still in, you know, bullish territory. Like I said, it's. Let's see if I like it. Let's get a little bit. Let's get a bit lower here. Yeah, I mean, it looks a lot cleaner lower. So I wait and see. You know, tomorrow morning, essentially, what this is looking like, and. If we do catch a nice little breakout, even just from right here. Yeah, I mean, 120 is not, not out of the question in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I like it. So, long story short, this is what you want to see hold. So it's, it's pretty much an area where you would like to see it bounce for sure. If we get, um, and remember too, there's like, you know, jobs report tomorrow morning um, and a lot of housing data as well. Um, from a bearish standpoint, I can also kind of see this look starting to form. So this could give you a head and shoulders look and that could give you your dip down in here. If so bearish, what it would look like is a break and then up and then down. Uh, bullish would be is if you do get this rollover and you get in here and then the neckline is used and this big gap up is used as support and then you start to rip at that point in time. So that that makes a lot of sense as well. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we wind up getting this tomorrow morning. We might even be here in uh, pre-market. Uh, before the bell opens. So like I said, this is just, this is, this is crucial, right? You want to see what has been, you know, very bullish support. You want it to see it continue to act. It's been resistance for a long time. You want to see it act as very strong support at this point in time. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Not only macro with GME, but, but micro in, into the end of the week. I like it. Okay, let's jump over here to AMC. So AMC, same thing on a monthly basis. Now, this one, I don't like as much. And here's why, before anybody hates AMC, he's a shill, I knew it, he's in love with Kenny. Let me explain, all right? This one, you got clear area of support that acted as support when it first came back and tested. Now, it's acting as resistance. This is why I talked about that 1042 level and why it was so important. Um, even halted right on it. So for AMC to really get back in potential bullish territory, it's got to clear that. Now, the market doesn't like imbalances, okay? Usually, not always, but usually, 
these type of imbalances will get taken care of before any further movement. For example, the big sneeze, squeeze, whatever you want to call it back in January 2021, basically produced you know this straight up stick. Well, the very next month, it came down and it took out this imbalance in this fair value gap area before any type of move continued on. So AMC's got a big monthly candle right here. This is where all the reverse split and everything like that happened. So even if it's, uh, this is gonna get some people pissed off, but even if it's a death flail, essentially before more dilution and eventually bankruptcy, I think there's a very good chance that it's going to pump to at least around that $22 uh, dollar area. Also, you're gonna get some people mad, and just like I started with the video, I don't care. If AMC wouldn't have done its reverse split, then it would have had a very similar look to the GME pennant, and this one potentially could be breaking out right here. But it, it didn't, it is what it is, but that is, without a doubt, a Big massive difference on the chart. Also, from here, you can see it was trying to hold that golden pocket and then no. So, what we gotta do now is we gotta we gotta deal with the reality of the situation, and, and this is the reality of the situation. Now, one thing I do kind of like on AMC, but you guys know the deal. Not a hopium dealer at all, but I kind of like this, this look. And before anybody flips out, let me show you another very similar chart. It's coin. So this is where coin IPO'd, massive sell off. Then it kind of went through that inverse head and shoulders. This is what I tweeted about. And then it started to move on. Now, obviously two completely different businesses I do think that AMC is going to have to show some real business and fundamental growth to be able to achieve this similar outcome. But typically, sorry, let me go back. So typically, um, when a stock is going to leave this downtrend, or it's you know in you know one of these kind of falling patterns, if you will, it typically will do something like this. All right, like it's going to kind of follow a trend out. Another really good example I was actually watching today is SMCI. SMCI, descending broadening wedge right here. Then once it started making its way out of this, kind of followed this trend line, and now you're catching the breakout, volume coming in. It's a good play, by the way. Um, sorry, let me go back to AMC. So what you'd want to see, worst case scenario, and going back to what I've talked about at the beginning, monthly chart, right? So you'd want to see, even if it goes through, you know, kind of accumulating through here, you want to see it at, at least showing a somewhat consistent series of higher highs and higher lows. Now, who knows what they're ever going to do as far as offerings or dilution or anything like that goes. So anytime, anytime you buy into a company that is diluting, been diluting, anything like that, you're just, you're, you're taking a major risk that that is going to continue. Um, I mean, it literally happened today. So when it comes to it, now the, the good news is, is I do think that there is more potential upside with AMC than there is for GME because the downside has been so bad. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and try to provide any hopium to people who bought up in here. That, that might never, happen again. If it does, it certainly would be a long time. But you go back to coin. Like I said, I'm just a technical trader looking at the way I see things on a chart. If AMC can start improving their business, there's no doubt about it. They can kind of make this, this horseshoe shape. But as long as reverse splits and dilution are on the table, well, that, that's why it had a worse pullback. So let's get into that. So if we get in here on the daily, for AMC, it has already pulled back quite a bit more. And the reason that I said that it needs to hold five is because that's that golden pocket. 
retrace. And then you can see it came up to the 0.5, rejected that gap, which is not ideal, but what is not bad anyway, is we're kind of tracking this sort of bear flag look, and I know some other people on Twitter were, and which I think that's awesome. Wait, good job, guys. Way to track the technicals. Um, but this certainly could play out. If it does, you want to see you want to see five hold. If not, then you're going to be looking around that that three to four dollar range. If that were to happen, but then you start seeing a strong bounce. Um, so if, if that happens, if it comes down to the three, I don't think there's any questions that, you know, GME is going to at least be testing this this 25 area. So if that happens and we get a good strong bounce and we get kind of that impulsive move top side, let's assume the golden pocket holds. Then from there, you could be looking at a move all the way up towards around 19. Right, and look at that, that's that's where that big falling resistance, let's go back out here to the monthly. So it makes some sense, right? Right, all that falling resistance could pump right up here and I'm starting to kind of take care of that imbalance. So I don't hate that idea in any way, shape or form. Well, let's say we don't hold the golden pocket because Kenny G hates us. And we come down here towards around that four area, then you'd be looking at like 16. So somewhere between 16 to 19, meme stocks really start pumping again. That's, that's definitely what you wanna see. Now, if, like I posted on Twitter, I said a move at least towards four to five, which happened, and then I kinda wanted to see this start to build out and kinda give you that inverse head and shoulder, Obviously, that didn't happen, right? Because Roaring Kitty came back and we just said, we go into, well, not the moon, the mini moon, right? So, so long as this kind of four to five area starts to be held as support, I still don't think that's the end of the world. I mean, there's a lot of consolidation that can happen in here before an actual move, right? If we look back and it's kind of, you know, doing one of these, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Especially if, you know, attention stays good, uh, business stays good, that kind of stuff. But overall, that's what I would be looking for on AMC. So certainly you want to see five hold. Not only because it's the golden pocket, excuse me, but also too, back over here, once again, a lot of resistance. So we want to see that hold of support. Um, could come back as far as What was it? Yeah. So it could come back as far as about four to 390 or so. That's still not the end of the world, but you certainly want to start seeing some, some decent reactions in there. But we're going to stay positive, right? This gold pocket's going to hold and it's going to go to Valhalla. Where I will start to say that I think AMC can be in, once again, decently bullish territory is if it really starts showing strong holding above this 1042 area that's going to be for gme like that 50 dollars area so gme starts showing strong holding over 50 and and i think you're going to see more than all-time highs again amc starts holding over 1042 i don't think you're going to see above all-time highs again but it does make a lot of sense at that point that amc will start coming up here and filling out some of these imbalances. Oh, what I say about that 19? Yeah, so to see, like that's that's the golden pocket there. It's the fib extension. It's the falling resistance. There's a lot of reasons and confluences that it it could. Like I said, GME pushes really strong. Uh, once again, this is gonna make people mad, but right now I, I think I think AMC needs GME, not GME needs AMC. Yes, they're all in the same basket, but something really explosive happens with GME and AMC goes along with it. I think you can see that pump towards around 18 or so. I said, there's a lot of reasons to see that it would test that before any type of 
real sell off, especially as long as the the meme stock craze, you know, still buzzing on social media. I mean, it would take something like, like I said, like Roaring Kitty's account is actually hacked or something like that to just go, oh crap, everything's gonna sell off again. But long as five keeps holding, worst case scenario, you sell off towards around that that low fours, high threes. I think I think it's easily can make that rebound move up towards around that that eighteen nineteen area as high as twenty two because there's a lot of like I said there's a lot of lot of imbalances and in good reason for the sell off here right so yeah I mean I mean it it looks clean I, I like it I said you zoom out here on a on a daily chart. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So, I hope this video was helpful to you. Let's let's wrap up with going over the the short-term price targets. So, for GME, really needs to hold that 27 to 25 area. I think as long as it holds that, that's going to be good. Potential kind of head and shoulders look going on right here even if it spills out into here, but then this acts as support and starts to push out, I'm totally okay with that look, but certainly want that to hold. So if you do start getting up above this and up into the 50s, that's going to be great for GME. Like I said, long-term, that that level is huge. So so above 50, I think, I think GME is probably going to see all-time highs again, but you wanna hold at 24 to 25. Let's look at it. Sorry. I mean, if you made it this far, you ain't going anywhere. Let's see what this move is. From where? Hold on. Sorry. Let me clean some of this up here real quick. But I'd like to see. Which is good. Like I said, th this move holding and basing above that that 200 day was awesome. So kind of want to see what this looks like. Yeah, I mean that 0.5. So I said right at the top. So anywhere in that 25 to 30. That's a, it's a great risk to reward spot to go long on it. Anyway, for sure. No doubt about it. And like I said, it's you know it's juice to the gills. It's got you know halts happening every two seconds. It feels like, but it's a good risk to reward spot. And like I said, the the macro chart on GME looks great. You know, call it what you want, meme stock, anything along those lines. This macro chart looks fantastic. AMC, not so much, but. If it can recover that 1042 level, then yeah, it's it's got a chance to work its way out. Once again, showing you a very real world example of nobody won a coin, everybody thought it sucked, was gonna go out of business, was a failed company, Jim Cramer hates it, all that kind of stuff. I mean, this this is literally like the exact same thing that you could see, and it could it could take some time, right? For it's doing this, but you know, if the movie business reinvents itself, it's a possibility, right? I'm not a hopium dealer, it's gonna take time, and I'm gonna end the video with once again, I do not care what you do with this information. All I'm doing is sitting down, looking at the technical aspects of the chart just like I would any other chart. So, I hope this video was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and much love. I'll see you in the next video. Once I think there's a reason to update or look at things, we'll do so. I'm not just going to, like I said, despite what the internet thinks, I'm not just going to sit here and talk about meme stocks all the time when, if, if there's not a reason to talk about it. But right now, they're fun and they're exciting again. And so let's, let's talk about it and let's have fun. Much love. Catch you guys in the next video.